Welcome once again to the Power Performances presented by Courtyard by Marietta. Alongside the man who ruined everybody's office pool this week as far as suicide picks, yeah. he was in Houston to That's see right. Jacksonville lose to Houston. I and Eagle, I'm My Jason bad. Horwitz, and I, and you know, this show is the Power Performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott. You might as well call it the Power Performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott, presented by Flat Stanley. Second straight week, we have wow. another Flat Stanley. This one from Olivia in uh, Tampa, Florida. Great coloring job on this one. We are going global with the seven- to eight-year-old market. I did not see that one coming, Jason. I can tell you that the, the show is having an impact. On my way over here, uh, I'm crossing the street here in the city, and someone says, Hey, Ian, great job on the computer. And my first thought is that I actually fixed this guy's computer. I'm like, man, did I, did I help this guy? No! He's talking about this show. It is the rage right now. It's really gaining a lot of momentum. Yeah, it is gaining momentum. Speaking of that, you don't have to call us anymore. You don't want to talk to us on the phone. You don't have to do that. But if you want to get your questions answered right below this video player, right Where's here. Oh. Well, he, I will understand this internet thing someday. But right <laughs> below this video player, you can put in your email, send your name. You don't make up a name, whatever you want. But put in a question. We'll try to get it on the show later on. That's... That's email. Wow, I, I got to get to know that. Let's take a look at what's on the table for this program. The Power Peas, we've got that for you every single week, running down the best sports performances of the week for you. And our first Power Perspective. We will sit back and ponder something controversial in the world of sports. In addition, great interview set up for you later on in the program. Greg Schiano, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, one of the great stories in college football. We'll talk to the head coach of Rutgers coming up. He's really turned that program around. A lot of firsts coming up in the show. We'll get to those. And, of course, if you want to call 646-CBS-1000, 646-227-1000, the number to call up, get your answer, questions answered, talk to Coach Greg Schiano because he may be the hottest coach in college football and he may be on his way to Coach of the Year. But a guy who was on the hot seat, John L. Smith, Oof. his tush is a little bit cooler this week as we get into our first power performance the Michigan State Spartans down 38-3 to at Northwestern. Now, this is a program, Northwestern, that everybody was a sentimental favorite this year uh, with their head coach passing away in the offseason. But Michigan State went in there, 9.54 to go in the third quarter and stayed the largest comeback in NCAA Division I football history. It had been 31 points. They staged a 35-point comeback and won 41-38. Absolutely unbelievable performance by John L. Smith's guys. Now 4-4, four and four, and instead of losing five straight, they've got a one-game winning streak and maybe a chance for a bowl game. Well, maybe they can ride some of this positive vibration to a successful season. We know John L. Smith desperately needed this win. Uh, Drew Stanton, uh, I know a guy that you're very familiar with, mm -hmm. your Michigan roots. My high school played against him in, uh, in the playoffs. His nickname is Rocky. Why? Why is it Rocky? Do you know? He falls down. And he climbs the art stairs. No. <laughs> no. What, what? Huh? He falls down and gets no. back up again. No. What, what is it? When he was six years old, he was in a bicycle accident. And a small little rock embedded into his forehead. And to this day, it's still there. The doctor said, hey, it's not going to do any harm. He has a rock right in his forehead. And he got the nickname Rocky. Somebody, That's the Michigan State knowledge I'm bringing to somebody, the program. Somebody did his research for this show, but we all know that I do numbers, and those are the shows that I. Those are the things that I bring. One number to point out from the halftime point of the Notre Dame Michigan State game to the point where it was 38-3 in Northwestern. So basically four games. Michigan State had been outscored 156 to 49 and went on a 38 nothing rampage, and now their season saved. All right, you like numbers? I like we numbers. got numbers for you. Our second power performance. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights, they are undefeated, and their Heisman hopeful Ray Rice goes for a career high 225 yards rushing in a win over Pittsburgh. Best start for the Scarlet Knights in 30 years. Rice has been an absolute revelation, averaging 160 yards on the ground. You could say that the Panthers got a taste of fried rice. No. That's right. Oh. No, I, oh. I wouldn't say that. Some would say that. But uh, Pittsburgh couldn't handle them. Couldn't I, handle Rice, couldn't handle Rutgers. Rutgers, great story in college football. I had Chinese food for dinner last night, and it, fried rice was not on the show. But, but, you know, Rutgers, you know, this is a team that didn't necessarily know where it was, you know, the, the direction was going in a great, it was going forward this year. They were off a bowl game for the first time since 1970, I believe it was 76 or mm -hmm. 78, no, 78 Garden State Bowl. First time ever, second time ever last year, going in the right direction. But this year, 
They were without their starting quarterback, who had led the Scarlet Knights for the last three years, set all kinds of school records. They didn't know where it was going to go. They've turned to their running backs in Brian Leonard and Ray Rice, and they possibly, because they get Louisville at home, on a Thursday night nationally televised game, they possibly could be undefeated heading to West Virginia on the last Saturday of the college football season. And those are the two big games left on their schedule. Yep. With Louisville and West Virginia, certainly we're going to find out what Greg Schiano has on his hands once they wrap up with those two biggies. And Ray Rice, hey, he could have been a Syracuse Orange. Uh, they, when, he, when Paul Pasqualoni left, they let him go. All right, we move on and... I'll take a little credit for this here. I called it last Wednesday at the end of the show. Don't know if you stuck around for the end of the show. The Buffalo Sabres. Yes, hockey still goes on in this country and other countries as well, if you consider Canada another country. Uh, <laughs> the uh, last Buffalo I checked, Sabres. it is an, another country. The Buffalo Jason. Sabres, 9-0, off to the best start in franchise history and one win away from tying the NHL record for most consecutive wins to start a season. That would tie the 93-94 Maple Leafs. It's a little different because there's shootouts instead of ties. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a little different, and three of their first five wins were in shootouts. But they're not losing the shootouts. They're not losing in overtime. They still have nine wins. And this team, which is a team that was very close to getting to the Stanley Cup Finals last year, uh, I believe went to Game 7 against Carolina last season, they're well on their way to going back there. Yeah, they have no Stanley Cups in their franchise history. Lindy Ruff, the head coach, is looking to change all that. Ryan Miller has been outstanding in goal. And Chris Drury. Now, you're a young man. I know that. But for those of you out there that might be in my age group, you remember the name Chris Drury from another sporting achievement. 1989 Little League World Series, Trumbull, Connecticut. Chris Drury threw a complete game five hitter in a victory over Taiwan. I'll never forget it. I honestly remember that game. Like you were there, weren't you? Was not there. <laughs> Only been to Williamsport once. It had nothing to do with baseball. But Chris Drury, uh, certainly starring in this sport, wonderful story brewing in Buffalo right now, the sizzling Sabres. Yeah, they All definitely right. are. He's got ten goals in, in nine games. We're going to move on. We're equal opportunity presenters here on this show. <laughs> and you ask, why? Well, why would that be? Because we want to be fair. We want to get everybody involved in the program. Normally... Kickers don't come up. If you talk to most football players, they don't even consider kickers part of the team. Sad but true. It's the loneliest position on a football team. Adam Sandler, he uh, made mention of it, and he's right. It was a great song. I don't know if you ever heard that song from Sandler. But we are going to salute the kickers this week from the NFL here on the Power Performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott. Matt Bryant. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a 62-yard field goal, third longest in NFL history. They get the victory over Philadelphia. And Lawrence Tynes of Kansas City, he missed an extra point earlier in the day, a 53-yard field goal to knock off San Diego. Kickers, you are welcome here on CBS Sportsline. We salute you. Well, here's how lonely being the kicker can be. You saw the picture of Lawrence Tynes. He missed an extra point earlier in the game. Nobody talked about it after the game except me when I said he shouldn't be a power performer because he missed an extra point. But he did redeem himself, 53-yard oh, field goal to win. You're a very negative man. They wouldn't have needed the field goal to win. I, uh, Matt Bryant, 3-for-3 three for, three for field goals, 2-for-2 two two on extra points. He didn't miss. He deserves the power performance. Lawrence Tyne... An NFL kicker, unless the snap is botched or he falls on his keister, should never miss an extra point. One more note on Matt Bryant. 1998, he leaves Baylor University. He is working in a pawn shop in the state of Texas. That is how far he was from being an NFL kicker. And now, uh, one of the great kicks of all time, 62 yards to win it. Great game, by the way. Yeah, Tampa it was Bay, a tremendous, Philadelphia. tremendous football game. And, and we're going to stay with that football game because... The other guy that scored in that game had nothing to do with offense, had nothing to do, he wasn't a running back, wasn't a quarterback, wasn't a receiver, wasn't even a kick returner. He's a cornerback, and he, along with Matt Bryant, scored all the points in that game. Rondé Barber, two interceptions, two touchdowns, both off Donovan McNabb, and if you take away Rondé Barber from that team, or... Maybe you take away some of the other defensive players. Tampa Bay wouldn't be as good as the team has been the past few years. He also had a forced fumble in that game. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, 
Rondé Barber, last week, all the, and for most of the NFL seasons and, and everything that circles, circles, when you talk about the Barbers, if you're not talking about them together, you're talking about Tiki. Rondé deserves just as much credit. He well, is just as good as his position. In a week where Tiki dominated conversation because of all the retirement stories, it was Rondé, and Tiki had a great week as well. Tiki's a tremendous player. Of course. If you want to take the big picture look, this is an amazing story. You have twin brothers playing in the NFL, playing different positions, and each, as well as you possibly could expect, performing at their respective spots. Rondé Barber has a Super Bowl title to his credit, yes, something he does. his brother Tiki does not have. Tiki does get more of the attention. Running back is the sexier position compared to cornerback. Rondé Barber played as well as you can play at that position, and you're right, Matt Bryant, we're not even talking about Matt Bryant today unless Rondé Barber does the job that he did on Sunday. Yeah, no reason Philly. to kick a 62-yard field goal if you're down by six points. <laughs> so you had to. All right, baseball now. We can't forget about baseball. It's the World Series, a dominant performance in Game 3. Everybody was talking about Sludge from Game 2. We're talking about Chris Carpenter in Game 3 of the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, I've got to be frank with you. I didn't think Carpenter was going to come out and be as totally dominant as he was after his performance in the NLCS against the New York Mets. Eight innings, he had 82 pitches. And if the Cardinals win this World Series, Jason, he will join the likes of a Bob Gibson, yep. of a John Tudor, St. Louis Cardinals pitching lore, others who have starred in the fall classic. That was a classic performance. I'm sorry, I know that no, you're no, a Tigers was... guy. I know, hey, I was... know. <laughs> Get over it. Carpenter was brilliant. He was brilliant, and, and there's no doubt about it. And then, you know, you take Chris Carpenter, he's now seven, the Cardinals are now seven and one in, in postseason play when Carpenter takes the ball. That one loss coming this season uh, to the Mets in game six. But Chris Carpenter, you know, the one thing about this is is that everyone's talking about the Chris Carpenter as the St. Louis pitcher. Anthony Reyes did it to the Tigers in game one as mm -hmm. well. The one question I have is for Detroit, is that Curtis Granderson and Placido Polanco were 14 for 33 in the ALCS. They are 0 for three games so far in the World Series. Uh, I, you know, 0 for 22 between the, between the uh, two of them. And if you throw Pudge Rodriguez in there, all three of them are 0 for the World Series so far. That's got to change. And for Carpenter, personally gratifying as well because he was not a part of that team two years ago because of a strained bicep that went to the World Series. And they missed him. They missed yep. him badly. He gets to pitch in the Fall Classic and just twirls a gem in game number three. All right, let's talk about our first power perspective here uh, as something that we haven't done. We talked about having Kenny Rogers as a power performer. He's been a power performance on this show before. We had a hard time saying that he is a power performer this week because of everything that's being talked about that was what was on his pitching hand was it dirt Tony La Russa saying it wasn't dirt but he didn't challenge whatever it was his numbers Chris Carpenter numbers almost identical but Carpenter's a power performer because no one's saying he cheated I mean it's as simple as that whether Kenny Rogers cheated or didn't we'll never know because they didn't investigate everybody has their own opinion a lot of people saying he did I know you think he did a lot of people think he did We'll never know, but that's always going to loom in the end. No, you know what troubles me, though, about the Kenny Rogers performance? He disgraced this show more than <laughs> anything else. That's what I'm offended by. A couple of weeks ago, Kenny Rogers, we both sat here and just spoke glowingly about this story. Kenny Rogers coming back. Uh, he's been maligned through his Major League Baseball career to disgrace the power performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott. What do you mean? What is that dirt, Jason? Well, I don't know what it is. That's what you're telling me before the show. It's a sticky substance. It's a foreign substance. It's not supposed to be there. Baseball, they, they, they turn their head because they don't want the spotlight to be put on the pitchers in the postseason. They don't want this to become the story of the no. World Series. They know that this is a grand stage. Even Tony La Russa pulled back because... Uh, baseball's been very good to him, and he recognizes that uh, by pushing this story along, it, it's only going to get people a little bit more skeptical and cynical about the sport. He cheated. Yeah. It's as simple as that. One, he prob one problem, though, by baseball not doing anything, they caused a bigger story because you take him out of the game, it's a dead story, you know what happened, it's over. But, one but, 23 straight scoreless innings. That's the only but. All right, folks. 
That is it for our six power performance and our power perspective. What do you think about it? Give us a call, 646-CBS-1000, 646-227-1000, or email us right down there. After the break, Rutgers coach Greg Schiano, he'll be on the horn with us. We're gonna talk about how he's turned that program around in this season. You're watching the Power Performances, presented by Courtyard by Marriott.